My life organization slash productivity system for 2023 consists of six tools. My daily logbook and journal, Notion, Things, my note cards, Google Calendar, and Apple Reminders. I'm keeping this as simple as I possibly can because I don't want to spend any time this year trying to optimize this system. I want to just do the actual work that needs to get done. That's one of my rules for living a deliberate life this year. Don't optimize the system, just do the work. My daily logbook and journal is just that, a daily logbook. It's a way to keep a page open throughout the entire day so I can jot down any notes and see what I need to get done that day. On one side of the page, I'll do a time blocked calendar. Next to that will be the day's tasks and reminders and what time I woke up that day, what I read, how long I ran, and what workout I did. Below that will be empty space to doodle or just jot down fleeting thoughts and ideas I have during the day that I want to think about later. Having a blank page where I can just write down any idea that comes to mind is really important to me because oftentimes when I'm reading or working, I'll have sort of this distracted thought if there's something good in the book or if I'm just thinking about something else. And I want to be able to put that somewhere where I know I can capture it, but it's not going to interrupt the flow of what I'm doing. For weekly planning and reviews, I'm using Matt Raglan's brilliant gap and wrap methods which are all done inside the daily logbook slash journal. Gap you use at the beginning of the week and you identify your goals, the actions you need to take to achieve those goals, and what time you're going to protect to achieve those actions. Wrap is something you use at the end of the week as a template for a weekly review process. Both of Matt's videos on the gap and the wrap system are linked down in the description if you want to check it out. Notion is the king of notes and organizational systems in my mind, and it's gonna do just that for me. Keep my notes and organize my life. I was tempted to use the PAR method from Tiago Forte to organize my Notion, and I've tried this in the past, and eventually I decided against using it. So instead of the PAR method, I have a couple of these one-off pages, like a database to manage my blog CMS, um, a database to manage my YouTube, blog, and newsletter ideas, and then a database to hold all my other notes. This notes and docs page is sort of a catch-all for all the notes and docs that wouldn't otherwise belong in the other databases I already have. For example, if I take a one-off course in the early days of book publishing, I would just put that note in my notes and docs database. Now, I could see this becoming a bit too cluttered because there's already a lot of notes in there and it's only January 5th. But I think that's okay because the nature of these types of notes isn't necessarily discoverability or interconnectedness. It's more like I just need some place to throw something and I'm gonna throw it there. And since it's search on Notion is decent, I'm pretty confident if I know something is in my Notion database, I can just look through that notes in docs database or just search my Notion and I'll be able to find it. My Notion is also integrated with ReadRise, which helps me process all my highlights from articles, papers, and eBooks, which leads to my note cards. Continuing with my desire to stay analog as much as I could this year, I'm committing to the process of all analog note cards for at least the first quarter, and then we'll reevaluate from there. I learned this system from Ryan Holiday, who learned it from Robert Greene, who probably learned it from someone else. My friend, Billy Oppenheimer, who is Ryan Holiday's research assistant, wrote a great article on how he uses the note card system if you want to learn the intricacies of it. As a quick overview, here's what that process looks like for me. For articles and online PDFs, highlights get added to Notion from ReadWise. Highlights then get processed. Anything that I want to keep gets transferred to a note card with the title and author of the source on the back. I then write a title for the card and put it on the front of the stack. I repeat for all the articles and highlights in my literature notes database, which just comes from ReadWise. For books, the process is similar, but instead of going from ReadWise to Notion, my book notes go from annotations and marginalia in the book to Notion. Because I publish my book notes online, I want to save everything digitally. The ideas that stand out the most get added to note cards with a reference to the book. During my weekly review, I lay out the new cards, flip through my old ones, and see if they connect somehow. This is a hard process for me because I'm a linear thinker and I like to make sure everything has themes and categories. But what I've learned in what Billy wrote about in the article is that he kind of lets themes develop naturally instead of creating them and trying to rigidly fit all the cards into those systems. One of the benefits of this is that you're now allowed to capture anything that's interesting and you're not limited to capturing the stuff that's just interesting as long as it fits within a pre 
predetermined theme already. Now, yes, I know what you're saying that fanning through a few hundred note cards every week probably isn't the most efficient way to store ideas and take notes. And I agree with you, but I think that's a feature and not a bug. Doing creative work is hard. It's meant to be difficult or everyone would simply be a creative person who writes and creates all these different things. It's not that easy. So yes, all these digital note-taking apps are great, but they try and do too much of the thinking for you. And that's helpful to kind of get an outside of the box picture, but I think at the end, you just have to have some brute force and some elbow grease and go through all of your ideas and connect them as often as you can. This isn't sexy, this isn't pretty, but I think that's how great work gets created. The rest of the stack is pretty minimal. I use Google Calendar for appointments and things for tasks, not to be confused with thing from Wednesday, and Apple Reminders for on-the-go reminders. Apple Reminders gets imported into Things, which is why I use both Apple Reminders and Things. I listen to podcasts a lot in the car, and I just have ideas when I'm driving or out at the grocery store. And so what happens with Reminders is I can simply take out my phone and say, hey Siri, remind me about this idea in this podcast. And instead of that going into the weird abyss that is Apple Reminders, that gets actually imported into Things, and I can see that as a task. One new thing I'm trying is called the BS Hour. I read about this online, I think on Twitter last week, I don't remember where, or who published it, I can't find it. But it's basically this idea that you have all of these administrative boring stuff that you need to get done as an adult, like paying your bills, paying your taxes, uh, maybe even going to the grocery store or buying pet food, all of these just sort of annoying stuff that needs to get done that's not very exciting to do. And I'm very bad at doing all of that stuff, like processing my mail, I'm very bad at processing my mail. So this year, I'm gonna try and schedule two hours of BS blocks throughout the week. And during these two hours, I'm gonna get out my bin, which is what I'm calling my BS bin, and inside of there is mail or little tasks that I need to get done during this BS hour. So if it's mail, obviously I just put the mail in there, but if it's a task, I just write the task on the sticky note, throw it in the BS bin, and I get to as many as I can within the hour. This is sort of reversed chronologically, so I get to the latest things first, that way I don't have to pay extra for overdue bills or stuff like that. And that's it, that is my productivity slash organizational system for 2023. Again, this is pretty minimal, and I'm really gonna work hard at keeping it just like it is, because I don't wanna get distracted by optimizing the system. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead, hit the bell and subscribe for future videos. And if you really like this video and want more content from me, subscribe to my weekly newsletter. Every Friday, I'll send you five interesting ideas that stokes your curiosity and helps you learn something new. I call it the 221B newsletter as a nod to Sherlock Holmes and his residence at 221 Baker Street for all his multidisciplinary studies and experiments that went on in his room slash office slash study slash thing. If you want to subscribe, go to dltn.io slash 221B or visit the link down in the description below. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.